Foods of the 18th century were often very regional. Take for instance this little dish. It's uh, sweet, it's buttery, it's custardy, and it's bready. It's a bready little dessert. It's also got raisins and dates in it. In many places this might be called a bread pudding, but this regional variation is famously known as white pot. We found a number of white pot recipes, some as early as the 16th century and others right on into the 18th century. Uh, the term white pot is a provincial phrase originating from southwest England, uh, specifically the Devon area, and it simply means white pudding. Recipes for white pot change very little over the years. They primarily consist of bread, sometimes rice, uh, sugar, eggs, uh, usually cream, some spice, and sometimes a little bit of fruit. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is preheat our oven. We're going to be using a Dutch oven today. If you're going to use a Dutch oven, you need to get an ember bed ready for that. If you're using a wood-fired oven, that needs to be fired up, but you'll need to let it cool down a little bit to get to the right temperature. And if you're using a regular home oven, you need to preheat it to 350 degrees. We're using our inverted saucepan today. You could use a pipkin uh, or a boiler or whatever you have available. We're going to begin by placing a pint of cream in our saucepan. Uh, now let's place a stick of cinnamon in that, uh, a pinch of salt here, a little bit of mace, and now let's grind some fresh nutmeg. As soon as this begins to simmer, you're going to need to remove it from the heat and let it cool down. Now let's take care of our eggs. Uh, we need two whole eggs in this. And we need one egg yolk. Okay. And now we need two to three tablespoons of sugar. Now we have to do is whisk this together. Now that our cream is simmering, let's go ahead and take it off and let it cool down. I'm gonna take some nice white bread now, and I'm gonna slice it very, very thin, and then take off the crust. So I'm left with nothing but the crumb. We'll need enough crumb to fill up our baking dish. In this case, I'm using one of our tin eating bowls. Uh, you could also, if you wanted a larger one, uh, use one of, of these milk pans. Uh, but you definitely need about uh, twice the amount of ingredients, and you need to increase the baking time. Each one of these slices I'm going to butter quite liberally on one side. I'm going to end up using about a half a cup of butter, one stick. While we've got our butter out, it's time to butter our pan. The bowl needs to be buttered liberally or the sugar that's in our white pot will make it very difficult to release. And now our cream has cooled a bit. We can take out the cinnamon stick. And now we're going to add just a little bit of the warm cream mixture into the eggs while we whisk it, just a little bit first to temper the eggs so that the eggs don't curdle. Once we've got a little bit in, we've got that totally whisked in, we can start adding the rest little by little. Now let's get started with our layering. We're going to start by putting in bread in the bottom of our bowl. We want to put it uh, the butter side down. We're going to put in two pieces here, that will cover up the bottom of the bowl. And now let's put a layer of raisins and dates in on top of that. And that's good. We're going to do another layer, butter side down, of the bread. So we want to make sure that there are no air gaps. So if you need to tear your bread up a little bit to fill in the gaps, do that. Our raisins and dates again. Once we've got our second layer here, we can start to add some of our custard mixture. Uh, we're going to just pour in enough that it soaks into these two bottom layers, but doesn't come up above the top of that bread. So that looks pretty good. Let's just do another layer.
Our dish is filled up. Let's put uh, our custard mixture in until it fills it right up and soaks in. So that looks good, I think. We'll be able to use just about all of it. That looks good. Now we're gonna take our final uh, pieces of buttered bread that, that are just gonna fill up the top. We're gonna put this in butter side up instead of butter side down and fill that top. Oh yeah, there we go. We're gonna tamp that down just a little bit so that it soaks uh, up from the bottom. And now we're gonna add some sugar to the top of it. We probably got another tablespoon here or so. Now that's ready to bake. Now it's time to bake this guy. We're gonna be using this Dutch oven. I've got it already uh, preheated some. And we're gonna set it on a ring of coals that we've got already set up here. Now, let's place our trivet inside and then we can add our pudding, our white pot in right up on top. Now we can set our lid on. I'm going to put some coals up on top. Again, usually we just need a ring of coals that go around the outside edge here. Okay, we've got our ring of coals up on top, uh, so I'm going to keep watching this, and at times I'll have to renew the coals up on top and maybe even tuck a few more in the bottom. While white pots originated from the Devon area, they were certainly well known to colonial cooks as well. While they might not have kept the same name, they kept the same construction. Uh, bread puddings have become popular again today, and some chefs have even discovered this interesting variation. It's starting to smell really good and it's only been about 35 minutes. Uh, let's take a, a quick look at this. As you can see, this already well on its way. So we're gonna take this out. This is done. We're gonna let this cool and then turn it out onto a plate. If you happen to have a salamander, you can heat it up very hot, uh, then sprinkle some sugar on top of your white pot and brown it. You can also do that with a kitchen torch or with a broiler. Just be careful not to burn your white pot. A nice finishing touch would be some fresh cream poured on top or maybe a little sack which is what we call sweet sherry. It's very common in 18th century recipes. Wow, that is excellent. It's buttery. Uh, the sweetness of the sweet meats and the custard really sets it off. It's delicious. You're gonna love this. All the items you've seen here today, the cooking utensils, the clothing, all these things are available on our website or in our print catalog. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to follow us on Facebook.